Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen on air or online at iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn app, Smart Speakers, nccradio.org, and on our own WHPC app. And WHPC is an award-winning radio station and has um, won top station a number of years in the Long Island area. We're so proud of that. And today, we are very happy to bring on board our guest, Carice Lagar. And Carice is a registered dental hygienist and myofunctional therapist. She founded the Myo Spot, a practice aimed at amplifying oral, oral wellness for the whole body. Through teletherapy, she helps clients of all ages overcome tongue ties, TMJ disorders, sleep apnea, grinding, anxiety, and various breathing and orofacial dysfunctions. She is passionate about education and self-help, and she published a beautiful book, How to Sleep Better, Eliminate Burnout, and Execute Goals. When not working with clients globally, she spends time with her husband and four kids. And the topic we'll talk about today is naturally improving sleep, through better breathing. So thank you so much for joining us today, Carice. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Let's go back in time and let's talk about little girl Carice. What were you interested in as a child? I was interested in, well, two things, very diverse, but I was interested in dance and choreography. And I was definitely interested in, at one point in time in my life, becoming president. So politics was very big for me when I was a child. So those are things that led you on your path, developing Not skills. At all. <laughs> But how did you move into being a dental hygienist, which, by the way, I will say is a really, really good choice as a profession. You'll never be out of work. Oh, it is a phenomenal uh, profession. I really got into dental hygiene because I was interested in teeth. It was always the first thing that I noticed on people. I, I never really had any negative experiences in the dentist's office. And so I kind of really thought that it was going to be a great way to you know, do something that I'm already interested in without having to work so hard. It's very hard to become president. It's super right. hard and competitive to be a choreographer. <laughs> this seemed like, you know, oh, I can do this. And then you got the, you know, the training. I mean, it is a very specific technique. You can't just say you want to do it. You have to go for certain training. Absolutely. It's very competitive. A lot of prerequisites. We actually have the similar prerequisites with a nursing program. And then after you get all your prereqs, you still have two years intensive of just strictly dental hygiene education, clinical hours, didactic experience. And so it's, it's definitely a rewarding, but challenging career. So I found you and invited you to be our guest today right here on WHPC because I think that you actually expanded that vision going from a hygienist, which of course you have to do hands-on, to actually education. And you founded Myospot, which really there is more and more scientific research coming out about how important What's going on in your mouth is to the rest of your body, because there are microorganisms that actually can escape from the mouth into the entire bloodstream and cause heart disease. There is so much research coming out about that now. So oral health is becoming more and more a focus of total wellness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in many different facets, there you'd be surprised how much of our overall health and wellness is really invested in what's going on with everything around the oral cavity. So how did you move to, I mean, one thing that's I think very unique is you're talking about doing more like a, a therapeutic discussion online with someone versus coming into the office and doing a teeth cleaning. 
And and that's kind of a different aspect, I would say, that I really never heard of from an oral care therapist before. Absolutely. So I really got into myofunctional therapy um, because of my children, actually. So my children, I think as parents, you know, we always give the highlight reels of what's going on in our homes. If somebody says, how is everything? You might say this one's in ballet, that one's in, uh, you know, soccer, and we're going to the championships, you'll give them all the highlights. But I actually had a lot of other things going on in my household. Um, My son, he's my only boy and the oldest of my children. He had ADHD and a a lot of different behavioral and outbursts, um, emotional regulation issues. And we were forever back and forth in that principal's office. They knew our family by name, and it was not something we were very proud of. My daughters, um, all three of them had very similar issues, but very different as well. The oldest one had every sleep issue under the sun, you name it, every night for 10 years straight. There was some form of bedwetting, sleepwalking, night terrors, like there was a lot going on with that one. And then the younger two had a lot of upper respiratory issues. So between sore throats, ear infections, and repetitious you know, versions of that. And it actually took a pediatric dentist that I was working for as a hygienist at that time to kind of put together all the pieces for me that the way that they were using their oral facial muscles, how they were breathing, the mouth breathing, and and how everything kind of came together for them. And it manifested differently, but it all had a very similar, a very similar source. And so that's really what drove me is wanting to get to the root of that, wanting to understand how I could have been in this industry. I went to a very prominent school. I went to the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey to get my dental hygiene education. And none of this was ever really brought up, but there's so much research and so much validity in it. And so it kind of turned my trajectory off of clinical and into bringing to light a lot more of the connections between the oral cavity, the upper respiratory system, and how you use those muscles and structures and how that impacts our overall health and wellness. Well, that's your journey. And did you find that going more into this holistic understanding of dental hygiene helped your own children? Significantly. I like to say that I got to meet them for the first time at the end of us really working together with myofunctional therapy and going through oral appliances and so forth. Um, It has really gone from night to day where we don't have those sleep issues. My son did not actually have ADHD. Turned out he had a sleep issue. And then that was something that we were able to resolve. And And so, yes, my household is completely different. It's night and day. And I really got to meet them for the first time once they were no longer burdened by these different things that they were troubled by. They became their true selves. So you have that focus and we'll talk about some of these things like oral appliances and things like that. But did you also make other holistic changes like a change in diet? Oh, yeah, definitely. We did a change in diet, we changed their breathing, we really had to work out and, you know, figure out what was going on with their muscular function. Um, We did make a lot of different changes in the household, we did create better sleep hygiene, nasal hygiene routines, we we changed a whole lot significantly that didn't involve us having to um, take any sort of medications or have any other adjunctive care. So we did do yes, the holistic route. And it takes more work because, you know, when you're just going to give a child a pill and think that's going to clear everything up or an adult for that matter, that seems a whole lot easier than recreating your lifestyle. Oh, that's significantly easier. It's just adding a pill as opposed to actually changing your lifestyle. And that's the most important part is realizing that you need to make that change and committing to it because that's the hardest part. And I'd like to remind our listeners that you are listening to WHPC right here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3. And today our guest is Carice, and she is a registered dental hygienist. And she's written a beautiful book called Accomplished, How to Sleep Better, Eliminate Burnout, and Execute Goals. That's a wonderful name of your book, Carice. How did you get to that name? I really did the book as like a labor of love. And so when I was thinking about 
especially when I thought to my own journey and the children and how I feel like I've met them for the first time afterwards, I really felt like the connection and making that connection, it was going to lead to people becoming new versions of themselves, being able to be more productive and accomplish more. And so accomplished really felt right. And then I didn't want to just leave it as accomplished as if it was like some sort of business book. And so I added in what exactly they would be able to get to. So how to sleep better, eliminate burnout and executing goals. Well, that's a lot, you know, executing goals. And I can really see where you can get to that if you're working with people who are in a learning mode, such as children. But how about with adults as well? Oh, definitely with adults. So the CDC and the WHO, so Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization, have both declared sleep deprivation first on a national level with the CDC, but the WHO declared sleep deprivation a global issue in 2015. And so it is a an issue that I feel like a lot of adults struggle with and some don't understand or aren't properly diagnosed with it. And so once you kind of get over some of these sleep breathing disorders or sleep deprivation, you're able to show up as a more productive version of yourself and you can get more done. You can execute goals when you are no longer having to fight daytime fatigue or sleepiness. So let's talk about some of the things that you discuss in your book, and people can find that, how to sleep better, eliminate burnout, and execute goals. What's the best way to find it? you have the website you would like to share? Yeah. So my website uh, does have a lot of information on it. You can also schedule on there to meet with me. I do free consultations just to kind of discuss the issues further, but it's themyospot.com. Now, let's talk about what is myofunctional therapy? Absolutely. So myofunctional therapy is kind of like working with a personal trainer, but for all the muscles below your eyes, but above your shoulders. So what we do with those muscles is that we help to strengthen, isolate, coordinate these muscles to help facilitate better oral function, eliminate compensatory patterns that may be contributing to poor sleep, mouth breathing, TMJ disorder, and so forth. How would you know if somebody was breathing? How would someone know if they themselves were breathing incorrectly? Or would it require speaking with a therapist such as yourself? So you definitely would know if you were just very conscious of your breathing. I think the more awareness you put to your breathing, the more you start to understand where it is stemming from. Some people feel there's like a shortness of breath that they constantly have. A lot of times that might be related with mouth breathing because nasal breathing is the only way that you're going to fill up that lower third of your lungs and really get in the best depth of breath. Um, And so the shortness of breath, if you're experiencing that and you're experiencing it often, if you already have another you know, respiratory condition. A lot of people with asthma sometimes um, significantly can notice that they are experiencing these respiratory distress issues. You could do a simple one minute breath test that I like to recommend people do. So you would just sit up wherever you are, nice and tall, feet flat on the ground, take a deep breath in through your nose. If it's a struggle for you, that's definitely an issue. But if it's not, continue to take that deep breath in through your nose and then exhale back out through your nose. As you inhale again, we're going to just repeat that inhale and exhale. You inhale again. I just want you to take note of what's going on. Where where is your tongue in your mouth? And then as you exhale, if you're noticing that your tongue is anywhere but lightly suctioned up to the roof of your mouth from the front of the roof of the mouth all the way through to the back, so from the hard palate all the way to the soft palate, if it's anywhere else than that, you're most likely breathing incorrectly. So that's a little self-test that people could have done right along with us. Absolutely. You know, all of our shows are also archived. So if someone hears this and they go, wow, that's really interesting. I don't want to try that right now because I'm driving home behind the wheel of my car because, of course, our show is also on air and people could be listening right now while they're driving. So when you go home, we have an archive so you can listen to the show again or share it with someone else if they'd like to try that little self-test. And, you know, Carice, as a nurse, I know how important that breath volume is because when people are hospitalized, that's one of the things they always test before they sort of let you out is breathing into something that looks at what is your breathing capacity. 
Yes, yes. It's very important that we are always looking at that because, you know, it, we can go for a while without eating. We can go for a few days without water, but breath is like the most important critical aspect of life that we couldn't go but a few minutes without. And so, yes, it's important that we're always looking at that in all spectrums, the medical and the holistic route. And how does breath impact sleep? I mean, that's that's such a big thing where people are using those sleep apnea machines and definitely looking at how breath impacts sleep. Absolutely. So like I just mentioned, breathing is our most important function that we do. And so when we're talking about like sleep apnea or sleep breathing disorders, a lot of times your sleep is becoming interrupted. So you're not fully able to cycle through all your sleep cycles and hit all the stages, especially in the important deep sleep stage is because your body has to constantly wake itself up in order to resume breathing. And so what you'll find is that the first few stages of sleep involves muscular relaxation, and then we're lying down. And so there's gravity on top of that. And I like this analogy. If you imagine somebody who has six pack abs and they lie down at night to go to sleep, those six pack abs are still there, very prominent, nothing moves, no shifting. Okay. If you have somebody who's a little overweight or who might have a beer belly and they lie down, things shift, things move, gravity impacts it, the muscles probably aren't as well developed. And so things are shifting and they move. You can imagine your airway in that way, where all the muscles are relaxing and gravity is impacting. And those muscles, especially those around the upper airway, so the pharyngeal muscles, if those are relaxing and now you're more prone to closure, you're not going to be able to breathe well, which is going to impact your sleep and your sleep cycles, which is where my field of specialty comes in, the myofunctional therapy, really bringing awareness and strength to these muscles. That way we're able to facilitate more of that stability. So there's a lot of discussion about how much sleep that we, you know, truly need. And I know that varies depending on your age, your sex, your ability level. But when they say everyone needs seven to eight hours of sleep, what do you think of that? I think that it is not the quantity as far as the hours. It's a very much the focus needs to be on the quality of the sleep. Um, a lot of people nowadays are able to track their sleep through whatever um, smartwatches that they might have, different apps on their phones and so forth. And you'll find that a lot of the data is showing some of them that, yes, you may be in bed and you may be doing what you believe to be sleeping for seven, eight, nine hours a night, but only three or four of those hours were, was actually quality sleep where you got into REM sleep, where you were able to actually do all the restorative processes of sleep. If you're not hitting those restorative processes, you're not getting your immune system to kind of help itself um, overnight. Your brain is not doing any of its own self-cleaning, draining, memory input. You're not getting the cell regeneration. Like these processes have to happen in order for the sleep to be quality. And so if you're not hitting um, those deeper stages of sleep, you're not really getting good quality sleep. And so you could be in bed for eight hours and you could believe that you're getting eight hours a night, but if it's not restorative sleep, it's it doesn't matter how long you were in bed. It's highly important that we focus on the quality over the quantity. So I find it interesting that you're talking about doing a teller consult, did that come up during the time that we were all locked down? Absolutely. Absolutely. And honestly, I feel like that's probably one of the few benefits to that lockdown is that we've all kind of learned how to work more in a virtual setting because that's increase the impact and the reach that we can have. It's not everywhere that somebody has a myofunctional therapist. You know, there's maybe three to 400 of us across the world so far. I'm hoping that it will expand and in time grow and grow. Um, but for now, you know, I think it, it has only increased access. I think so too. But we usually think of people who are dealing with dental issues and especially with a dental hygienist, basically being in a hands-on in-person event. So I found it really interesting that you're talking about teletherapy. 
Oh, absolutely. Especially if you think about myofunctional therapy back in that analogy that I mentioned a little earlier, where it is kind of like personal training, it's very much a, you know, instruction based therapeutic process. And so it doesn't require all the hands on clinical stuff that we would have to do in the typical clinical hygiene setting. It would definitely be a little bit more um, easy to facilitate it through telehealth for sure. So how would a session go if someone were to go to your website? That's a very good place to find you. And that's themyospot.com. And people can visit the archive and get the link. What would that be like? So a session, an active session kind of looks like a true personal training session of sorts. And that's just because it's the best analogy. We're really getting to pinpoint where muscular dysfunction is in the individual. And then we're working on isolating these muscles. How do we isolate these muscles? What should you be feeling when you're doing a certain movement, emotion? Um, We're going to be working on strengthening the lips, the tongue, the cheeks. We're really working on a lot of different areas. And so we'd be doing various exercises. And in those exercises, you get a lot of guidance and awareness as to what you should be feeling, what you should be experiencing, and how it should look in order to be properly performed. And then from there, you're going to practice for the remainder of the week um, those exercises. And so it's probably a 30 to 45 minute appointment. And in that time, you're really working out those oral facial muscles. That's really interesting. So you're not doing a deep cleaning, but you would probably send someone to a local hygienist to do those kinds of things as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's like a workout um, for your facial muscles, starting to become aware of where you might best be holding your tongue or where you should be since perhaps before you never even paid attention to that at all. So that's a, you know, a whole new level of awareness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the awareness is key is that if we're not aware of it, we're not focused on it, it's definitely not going to change. And so there is that, you know, neurological aspect of it as well, where we have to be conscious of it in order to really create and facilitate change. So you did this with your own family and your own children. So are you a specialist in focusing on doing this with children or is it just as appropriate for older people? I love that question. I get that a lot. Um, I do not. I do all ages. So I do not just specifically focus on children. Children, I believe are, you know, they're so malleable because they're still growing, because they're still developing, because they're younger, you do see change faster in them. It is easier to change some of those muscular patterns that have only been occurring for seven, eight, nine years, um, as opposed to with adults. Now, does that make it impossible? No, it's just a little bit harder, right? It's a little bit harder when you're older to do certain things. And Certainly changing muscular patterns that have been there for 30, 40, 50 plus years is a little bit of a work and a task in and of itself, but it is definitely rewarding to work with adults and to see that change. And what about that sleep connection? Because so many people I know always say that they have so much difficulty sleeping. Absolutely. So once we're able to facilitate that the breathing and we get that nasal breathing going and we are strengthening those muscles around the upper respiratory tract and really helping those pharyngeal muscles get really good, we're able to help a lot of people to sleep in a more natural way. So now we're sleeping and we're able to respirate better. And because we're breathing better, we're going to be able to get through a lot of those sleep stages better. Um, In some cases, when there's more severe sleep issues, um, in some cases where there's, you know, insomnia or severe sleep apnea, we might find that we get some improvement, but not total relief. Um, And then we would use something, maybe an adjunctive. So you would still have like a CPAP or an oral appliance. That way your breathing is helping and the appliance is helping to facilitate that relief. Well, I haven't really looked into this yet. The next question, I'm not saying that you have either, but now there's commercials on TV where they have some other device that they implant under someone's skin that acts in a similar way to, you know, the sleep apnea devices, but you don't have that mask on your face. I'm not sure how, the, how well those work. Do you know anything about those yet? 
Yes. Yeah, so some of those are very interesting appliances um, where you're essentially just hooking yourself up to something that will um, wake up. It really is activating a certain set of muscle groups to wake up that um, or keep open that upper respiratory tract. And so when we're thinking about a CPAP, right, a CPAP as an appliance, that's a continuous positive airway pressure device. And so that's air forcibly opening that upper respiratory tract. And so these types of surgical solutions where you're getting something implanted, it's really just going to tighten up the muscles. That way it's doing the same thing, just a different mechanism of such in order to facilitate more patency of that upper respiratory tract. Wow, that is interesting. And thank you for sharing it. I just had no idea, no time to look into what that is. It sounds like it might be something that even if someone was getting that implant along with the therapy you're talking about, it might be actually a really good com- companion to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much for being our guest right here on Herbally Yours, Carice. So tell people again the best way to find you, your book your blog, and if they wanted to learn more about this topic. Absolutely. I want to say thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here and being able to share. If anyone is interested in just learning more about myofunctional therapy, my website is a really great place. It's themyospot.com. Or I have a blog where I do talk about these issues maybe more in depth if you're looking to really deep dive. And that is airway matters with an S dot blog. So not dot com, it's dot blog. And feel free to schedule on my website and or the blog site at any point in time um, to do a free consultation. Or you could follow me on social media. I am on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All of them are at the Myospot. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. It was a really interesting and different conversation, a lot of things I've never heard about before. And thank you for that. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Herbal Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For more information, email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai, at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us again next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy.